The DS Slab, a custom shell design that I designed to work with a DS macro style mod. And this is the assembly guide of how to put one together. So first let's go over what we'll need for the build. Parts that we're going to require are the hardware from the original DS, the skid plate, the DS battery, the front shell, the bottom shell, battery cover, membranes from the DS Lite, AVXY buttons, left and right shoulder, start and select, and D-pad, the power button, and also the volume slider. Okay, so starting from the start, we have the DS Lite motherboard. It has an older LCD that does work, but it has a blemish on it. So I'm going to be using this one with a digitizer. It's a little better condition, just a little dusty. I've used this uh, DS Lite motherboard before, which is why it already has a resistor in place to trick the system into thinking there's still a top screen in place. You can see it applied here. And the resistor just lands between LED A2 and LED C2. This is the top shell and there is some prep that we need to do to make this compatible with the system. First off, it doesn't have a light pipe, so I'm going to improvise one. One of the ways I like to improvise making a light pipe that actually works fairly good is to take some captain tape, I'm just going to cut it down to size, and then stick it onto the system with the sticky side down of course, making sure it sits uh, flat and flush. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and get my hot glue gun prepped. When it's up to temperature, I'm just going to make sure it is flowing freely. Good. And then I'm just going to fill it in from the back, and you don't really need a lot to do this. I'm just going to fill it in just a little bit, making sure it fills in up to the back of the captain tape. Get rid of the excess. And then I'm going to let this completely cool. Okay, so I've given it a little over a minute to completely cool down. I think that should be good. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. Just buff away the uh, leftover adhesive there. And I think this time around when I do my build, I'm just going to go with a single speaker setup. And for me, hooking up this one speaker, I'll be connecting to the SPL0. Or you can also tap into the SPR0. That's just the left and right uh, speakers, respectively. My speaker's on the left, so I'm going to go to SPL0. I'm going to measure out some enamel wire to cover the distance. I'm just going to estimate it. And I'm going to cut out two pieces here. One's going to go to the speaker connect on the motherboard. The other one will go to the ground. And the thing with enamel wire is you need to prep it before you can use it most of the time. So what I like to do is take a chisel tip blade and just shave off the ends uh, where the enamel is. That way I can solder to it much easier. I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of tweezers because they are really aid in working with the small and fine wire like this. Just be careful not to get your iron too close to the back of the speaker because that is a magnet and it can stick to your iron and will basically destroy the speaker. Going to go ahead and get my speaker hooked up to the motherboard now. And like I said, I'm connecting to points SPL0, and for this point on the motherboard, it is listed as BT negative. This is also just a regular ground. I would also say be cautious not to bridge BT negative and BT positive. You want to make sure that those are not connected in any way. So here are the connections SPL0 to BT negative. And I have a strip of captain tape here. This is just to make sure that the wire is in rough position. It keeps it in place. It's just a, a tidy and wire management feature that I, I'm using. Okay. 
After I add in the speaker, I'm gonna pop on the LCD. And like I said, I'm using the LCD with the digitizer, the touchscreen. There is an option to go without the digitizer and use a glass lens. Some people prefer that. It looks a little bit cleaner, a little more modern. This can be a little difficult as well. The digitizer has a tiny ribbon of its own and it's, it's pretty difficult to get in place. Just take your time. Moving back to the front shell, I'm gonna use this uh, screwdriver box as a standoff so I can add the buttons in completely without them bumping up against the mat. And we're just gonna add in all of our buttons, D-pad, AVXY, start and select. It might be a little difficult to get the motherboard seated. Just make sure that the speaker and the LCD fits into place nicely. Don't force anything in if it doesn't want to go. I'm just going to adjust. And then once everything is seated correctly, I will add in our two screws. Now that we're pretty much done with the front, let's move on to the bottom shell. Here you can see there's another spot for a speaker, if you wanted to run stereo speakers, I suppose. But what I'm going to focus on is adding the skid plate. We need to take this from the DS Lite and get it added to this custom shell. It's going to be held in with two screws, and just make sure that it, it is in this orientation. That's pretty important. I'm going to work on the shoulders now. In the original DS Lite, there are springs that go with the shoulders to help them uh, retract after you click them. Uh, we will not be using those. We just need the pins from the DS Lite. So I'm going to seat those in the uh, pin holders like so. And the shoulders just slide on. Make sure that the shoulders are seated correctly within the, the shell. You don't want them to stick out. They should be sitting basically flush with the shell. This is our volume slider. Make sure that the notch is face up and then push it all the way to the right. That makes it much easier later on to add the motherboard to the shell. This is the power switch. It has a slight overhang and that overhang is the part that faces down onto the shell. So just make sure that the orientation for the power switch is also set right and then slide it all the way forward as much as you can. I have the top shell again. Let's flip this over to reveal the volume slider. I want to make sure that the slider stem is in the correct position. That way it makes it a lot easier to get this onto the bottom shell. Make sure it is in this position all the way to the left or max volume. And the way that I generally like to seat this is going in for the power switch first, and then I lay it down. So stabbing the power switch stem into the power switch slider. And then laying the system down, just like that. I'm just going to slightly shift it, and it should find its position pretty easily. There. Breaking out the screwdriver box once again to stand this off from the mat. And I'm going to grab the five screws that hold the shell of the DS Lite together to hold my shell together. You only really need four, which is the top, middle, and bottom outer post. There's one that's below the right trigger. That's completely unnecessary, but it's an extra spot to add one if you want. I'll give a warning though, that if you over tighten that one, it can make the right trigger stick. The last thing we need to do for the build is manage the battery. There are two tabs that I cut on the, the normal battery that need to be removed so they can fit into the shell nicely. I also wrapped my battery in a little bit of captain tape to act as a pull tab to remove the battery more easily. 
Sometimes when you get these printed parts, they're covered in a little bit of dust from the manufacturers or a little bit of oil. I just rub it on my sleeve and then it's perfectly fine. The battery cover is held on with just one screw. Let's get that on and then we're pretty much done with the build. I'm going to check everything to make sure it works. The volume slider slides. And check to see if it boots and it looks like it is booting. We'll go through the normal boot up process where you enter in a username, favorite color, etc, etc, set the date, and then we'll check to make sure that it does indeed run games. Be aware that anytime you remove the battery, you'll have to go through that boot process once again. But otherwise, this is what the normal boot screen should look like. Alright, so on to some games. This is an R4 card, or some kind of equivalent to an R4 card. It basically allows you to put on emulators and ROMs and such. I have on here a Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator, but you can also add on things like an NES emulator and so on and so forth. The DS is actually a really pretty good uh, emulation focused handheld, which I like quite a bit. And here we go, I want to test out a Game Boy game. And the game runs absolutely fine. Now I want to test all the buttons out, and it seems like it is also working pretty good. Another option is just to use a Game Boy Advance cart. I have a flash cart here. And for a lot of people, a, a DS macro build is basically just a cheaper Game Boy Advance. Uh, Game Boy Advances are pretty expensive now. DS Lights, they made hundreds of millions of them. They're extremely cheap. So this is like an affordable Game Boy Advance for the most part. Uh, one thing I will say is before you remove the top screen to your DS, you need to set the system up to display Game Boy Advance games from the bottom screen. With my design, I have a couple options as far as lenses. There's a plastic lens that you could have seated if you remove the digitizer. There is also a glass version. This is the uh, more common version that people use, but I find that the bottom part of the bezel covers a lot of the screen. And to use a lens rather than a digitizer, you have to remove the digitizer from the LCD. This is my working slash beater LCD, and I've removed the digitizer on it. You have to be fairly careful when removing it, but the glass lens or the plastic lens can look really nice compared to most digitizers, which are worn out at this point. They have a lot of scratch marks on them. Now, let's get into the ordering. How do you make an order for a 3D printed part? I usually go to JLC PCB. It's fairly affordable and pretty easy to set up an order. You're gonna go to the quote now option for the front page for 3D printing. It'll ask you to upload your files, select the files that you might need. And once the part uploads, it should give you a little preview of what it looks like. It'll go over some options, the type of 3D technology. We're gonna go with SLA. Gives you a rough estimate of the cost. Then there's different options for the resin. Most of the white resins look about the same. They perform the same, but I uh, like to go with the black resin. I think it looks really nice. It's saying that this is gonna take roughly three days and it also asks for a product description. I just pick whatever, that's completely unimportant. And it will ask for a product description for every part that you upload. It's kind of annoying, but just quickly select whatever you need to to quickly get through it. We're going to upload all the parts. Make sure that all the resin types are the same, unless you want different colors for different parts. And then once everything is added, we can check out the total. And it looks like it's going to be roughly $12. 
Now, another place besides JLC that I really like is Shapeways, although this will be significantly more expensive, but their customer service and their website is really, really nice. It just takes kind of a long time to upload a part file. So here we go, there's the top, and there's a few options. There's uh, SLS, and this might be a viable option, but I mainly designed this for SLA type printing, but SLA on this website, just be warned, is gonna be a little expensive. If you wanna try uh, the SLS as an option, that's up to you. MJF is also a potential option, but just be warned that I have not tested these myself to see if they work. They should work, but I just wanna give the warning that they may not. All right, well, I hope I've been pretty clear with the instructions on how to, to build one yourself, how to source the parts. This model, uh, by the way, is available to my patrons in the mid and top tiers. That is the activist and enthusiast tier. That starts at $3 a month, and then the highest one is $10 a month. But $3 a month right now will get you access to this model for you to build for yourself if you're interested. And of course, thanks for watching, and I should have some newer designs and also some videos coming out pretty shortly. Thanks, and bye.